um, you know, obviously there's a lot of things that you could, could um, have conversations with uh, depending on, on what you're looking at specifically in this picture. But we look at the green grass and we look at the size of that calf. Uh, and then we look at, you know, th that cow condition. Obviously she's doing everything she can do to provide for that calf. But at this size of a calf, green grass and milk alone are not gonna meet the needs of that calf at this stage in the game. And so that, that's really where that hungry calf gap comes into play is, is that, um, you know, that lack of nutrients to get that two and a half average daily gain. And so if we think about, you know, how a calf is rumen or digestive tract is, the, um, you know, illustrated, uh, or excuse me, if we think about how a digestive tract of a calf when it's born compares to a calf following weaning, there's a little bit different things going on. And so if we look at the picture on the left, this is going to be a scenario, you know, in a calf that, that's just born, right? When a calf is born, it drinks solely milk, right? And it bypasses the rumen and goes to the abomasum. But what we want to do is efficiently convert that rumen over to a ruminant digestive tract where we have a, a well-developed rumen. And, and creep feeding helps with that um, because uh, as, as, as cattle or calves, you know, each creep feed, um, they produce what's called volatile fatty acids. Those volatile fatty acids um, can be acetate, propionate, butyrate. Butyrate specifically is a volatile fatty acid that helps with papillae development. And so if I go back a screen here, these are all papillae that line the rumen wall, and those are what absorbs the VFAs. So we go from a milk digestive system, which would be similar to a to a full ruminant animal that is able to absorb those volatile fatty acids. And again, creep feeding can help with that in terms of um, where, uh, of how those VFAs are absorbed. Also too, we know that the diet provides the substrates needed for the development, maintenance, and function of the immune system. And I have those listed there and I'm not going to go through each one of them individually, but we know that those calves have a lot going on at weaning, right? And you'll probably see this slide um, in future sessions, uh, specifically when we talk about weaning. But those calves have a lot going on uh, at weaning. They're weaning, they're shipped, they're commingled, their diet changes, the process, weather can throw a wrinkle in things. And so why not, you know, set those calves up for success, develop that immune system before that challenge. So, you know, creep feeding will help with rumen development and then as well as, you know, developing that immune system. Okay, so some ways or some time periods uh, that are, um, you know, good opportunities to put in a creep feeding uh, scenario. So when we have decreased forage quantity or quality, okay. I got unmuted. Can you guys hear me now? Okay. Um, so when, when forage quality and quantity are not that good, uh, fall born calves is an excellent opportunity to creep feed calves because we know that those calves are going to go through winter, uh, forage quality can be an issue at that time period. So helping meet the needs of the calf there. Additionally, first calf heifers are good opportunities to, uh, implement a creep feeding program. We know that first calf heifers typically have lower milk production compared to their um, cow counterparts. So if we know that they're producing lower milk, uh, that gap could be even more exacerbated in those girls. And then lastly, uh, for those purebred breeders that really wanna maximize gain, uh, especially on those bulls, get them over to a good start is an excellent opportunity to uh, utilizing a creep feeding program. Um, sorry, All right, so if we think about how much do calves uh, gain on creep, we're gonna go through a couple slides here. Uh, so this, this is some information from our Purina Research Center and Gray Summit, where we looked at uh, gain on small medium frame cattle and large frame cattle. And you can see that calves that were offered creep feed gained more weight compared to their 
uh, counterparts that were not offered creep feed uh, and in the gains associated with small and medium frame on the screen. Additionally, uh, there's been some work out there that uh, looked at five month old Hereford calves. Uh, what was cool about this is in this study, they followed these calves all the way to harvest um, and they fed calves for 90 days on creep feed or had no, uh, no creep feeding as a treatment at well, as well. And what they found out was that obviously calves that were offered creep feed uh, weighed heavier at weaning. Uh, we talked a little bit about that already. Uh, in, some in, in this case, 62 more pounds, 11% more uh, weaning weight in those calves that were offered creep feed compared to no creep feed. Uh, but what was interesting about this was that their marbling score was 10% higher in creep fed calves compared to their counterparts. And if you want, if you want to uh, think about this, if we look at when is the most advantageous time to put marbling um, for those calves to develop marbling. And we have a couple of different time periods here. So we have prenatal birth, weaning, growing, finishing harvest, all of those time periods. And if we look at specifically the critical marbling window, that is gonna be at that pre-weaning into the weaning and growing phase. And so in that study where they looked at carcass quality, uh, we were positively impacting, or the researcher were positively impacting marbling because they offered creepy to those calves and put that efficient marbling on uh, during that time period. And when we think about this question, I get this question a lot out in the field and from, uh, from different folks across the country. And, you know, I can just, my calves will just catch up. Um, I know my dad probably was one of those that, that would say that when I was growing up. And if we look at the data here, um, and again, this is going to be out of the University of Georgia, but if we look at the weaning weights, again, calves offered creep feed uh, were heavier at time of weaning. But was, what was really interesting about this study is that at weaning, they divided those calves into uh, concentrate fed bulls and forage fed bulls. And they looked at, you know, did those calves ever catch up? And in both instances, um, whether they were concentrate fed calves or forage fed uh, bulls following weaning, those calves never did catch up that were offered creep feeding or that weren't offered creep fed. I'm sorry. So pretty cool data out there. So, you know, when we think about the long-term goal of, of creep feeding, those advantages continue post-weaning. Uh, the other thing that uh, sometimes I, I get this, actually, not sometimes, I get this question a lot, and we'll talk a little bit more about the data um, from a local perspective here in a little bit. But one of the things that I want you guys to uh, start, your, start thinking about is um, really what does that creep feed cost you, okay? And a lot of times what Christy and I will, will get is, you know, brand X is X amount of dollars cheaper than, than your high dollar accuracy creep feed. Uh, but in this instance, uh, if you look at intake and cost per head per day, so you put them on the same playing field, uh, you can see on the screen here that, uh, you know, brand X, yes, it might be cheaper uh, per ton than our accuracy product. Uh, you can see that, that they also ate more of the uh, brand X, which resulted in a higher cost per head per day uh, than the Accuration and Creep program that we're going to talk about. And so what's really important there is that they got similar gain with 17% lower Creep cost. Uh, so just, just begin thinking about that. Like I said, we're going to talk a little bit more about that here in a little bit. Uh, I do want to uh, put this up here just to um, make sure I cover this. You know, there are times where creep feeding might not be advantageous. Uh, I'm not going to say that it, it's going to work in every instance. Uh, and those, those cases are going to be where forage um, quality is going to be, made, you know, be consistent. So it's going to be always high quality and there's going to be lots of it. Uh, you know, I know in the cattle business that that is very rare. Um, from a producer perspective. Uh, small frame cattle might not be as efficient, uh, as highly recommended 
or in times where you have high feed costs, low calf prices. And then, you know, geographic lo locations, I think that this one's probably the, you know, the number one uh, reason why creep feeding might not be recommended for some people is just if you've got large pastures and, you know, you can't physically get creep feed out there to them, then obviously that's a geographic lo uh, limitation, but uh, some, some uh, you know, incidences where creep feeding might not be recommended. Uh, so how does Purina Creep program perform versus conventional creep feeds, okay? And if you go back to that brand X versus AccuCreep, and this is really where um, the data starts to separate itself in terms of feed efficiency. Uh, typically on a conventional creep feed, uh, you have a pretty wide range of, um, you know, feed efficiency here. So anywhere from five pounds to 10 pounds per pound of gain. Uh, with our Accurate Action, our intake modifying technology, we can improve feed conversion by 33%. So less pounds of feed to get similar gain, which results in a expected feed conversion of about four to one to six to one uh, in, in uh, those incidences. And this, this on the screen here is just some data to support intake over a um, about an 84 day feeding program. Uh, you can see that there was a reduction of intake in the Accurate Creep program by 35%. But the big thing again here is gonna be that you're gonna get similar gain, um, similar gain with less total pounds of feed. And so if we think about how we're going to implement creep feeding efficiently, okay, uh, with our accuration technology, if you're not familiar with it, uh, it helps cattle create, um, become snack eaters. So they come eat a little bit, they go graze, drink some milk, what have you. Um, but we really want to make sure that we stay at that 1% of body weight. Once we get over that 1% of body weight, body weight on intake, um, really kind of going backwards in terms of feed efficiency. So through the use of our accuration technology, we can keep those calves at about 1% of body weight, uh, keep their rumen happy. Uh, we know that rumen efficiency is important. Anytime we drastically change the rumen pH, we impact forage utilization. And from y'all's perspective, especially on creep feed, right? Mom's milk and green grass are going to be your two biggest resources. And so we just wanna be able to complement that with a, with a supplement that helps utilize the green grass um, more efficiently by staying at that 1% of body weight. Uh, so how do you guys get this done? Uh, there are two, two ways, or there's one program with a couple different products that you guys can use to get this done. Um, in your all's marketplace, you predominantly have a Ranch Hand 14 uh, which is going to be a pelleted product that you can utilize in a self feeder. So if you call it a creep feeder, self feeder, deer stuff or bulk feeder, I, I hear all kinds of different names in terms of what they're called. Um, but that's what, that's what we would start with. And then we would transition to an AccuCreep program. And how you do that is, like I said, start with that Ranch Hand 14. Uh, the big thing here is to start those calves on a pelleted feed. Uh, that really helps them transition, eat, feed. Um, if we go to straight step number two, we're not going to be as effective as getting those cattle uh, to eat on a cell feeder. So put the, um, the pelleted product in the cell feeder. Uh, we want to feed that for about 30 days. Um, and then until intakes get to two or three pounds a head per day around that uh, time period. Uh, this bullet point here should um, should actually say target intakes of about 100 pounds to 150 pounds of of, of um, intake. So you got calves, you know, a total of 100 pounds over the 30 days. You can go ahead and transition them over. Uh, but how we transition them is probably the most important aspect of this whole thing. Okay, transitions. Um, no matter what life stage you're feeding, transitions are going to be the most important thing and transitioning them appropriately so that we don't get any digestive upsets is really the key here. So uh, how you would do this, uh, you would mix an Accuration concentrate. So at the co-op, 20% Accuration with 80% uh, grain. 
and they will, you know, you can get that mix there. Um, but what you want to do here is when that feeder is about five days from being empty on the, um, you know, the conventional creep or half full, right? We want to go ahead and dump that Accuration mix on top. And by doing that, mixing, dumping it on top, that allows you to transition those calves appropriately. Uh, we don't, do not want the feeder to run empty and then put Accuration in it. We want to make sure that that feeder is about half full and that we transition those calves appropriately. Um, so that we don't get any digestive upsets on those calves. The other thing, I'm gonna check the chat here. Um, it looks like there's, can't see it. Okay, so the other thing with the cell feeder, um, we do not want that cell feeder to uh, get empty. If we, we let it run empty, we gotta start all over again. Um, we want to have that, that, um, gate width at about two fingers so that we keep the um, the feed flowing but it's also not ending up on the ground or on the truck on the feeder tire uh, this is a good illustration of what we want the pan to look like uh, when utilizing an accuracy and creep program you want to be able to see some of the pan a little bit um, but you know keep that gate to about that two finger mark just so that um, it's a well-managed bunk if the feed gets wet, obviously you wanna clean that out, uh, make sure that the feed's not getting moldy, what have you. If the feed is dry and you know, you can just dump it back on top, but I, um, I wanna you know, really emphasize that self-fed products are not self-managed. So you need to be checking these feeders two or three times a week just to make sure that they're flowing appropriately, okay? Uh, so I just got some values from uh, Christy on, on some cost here and I uh, wanted to dive in that a little bit with you and again these values are going to be associated with today um, what the pricing is at the co-op um, as of you know August 18th 2020 uh, and so I put uh, I got up here I got a three-way mix it's about $214 a ton uh, this ranch hand 14 product that I've talked about is going to be about eight fifty for a fifty pound bag, um, and then Accu Creep, you're going to be at uh, about two ninety seven, about three hundred bucks a ton. And then there is also a steak maker product that that's available, uh, that's about ten dollars for a fifty pound bag. What I want to illustrate here is that the three way mix, the Ranch Hand fourteen, and the steak maker product has no you know, intake modifying technology built into it, okay? So the values that I'm gonna show you are gonna be strictly um, related to how much it costs for one pound of gain with different feed efficiencies. So on the screen here, I have your feed efficiencies um, listed. So three-way mix, seven to one, eight to one, rain chain 14, seven to one, Acu creep, we're going to be in that four pounds to five pounds per pound of gain. And then the steak maker, 15 to, is going to be very similar to your um, ranch hand or your three way mix. Okay. And if we look at, again, this is just going to be what the cost is per pound of gain. Uh, and you can see on the screen here that, um, yeah, accuration is going to be more per ton. But if we think about the benefits of a feed efficiency standpoint, uh, we're going to have lower price per pound of intake, or excuse me, lower price per pound of gain compared to their counterparts. Uh, and what's really cool about this is that um, it's utilizing your other resources more efficiently, right? So it's going to be utilizing that forage more efficiently. They're going to become snack eaters. They're going to come up and eat a little bit of creep feed and then go graze, go drink some milk, what have you. Um, but also just help stimulate that rumen environment to help produce more papillae, develop that rumen so that they, they go on feed um, easier at time of weaning and, and transitions over appropriately. Uh, so just real quick here, some benefits of um, some accuration creep. So composite of gain or composition of calves. So these calves are gonna, um, you know, how, how they're going to be developed uh, from a um, fat meat, all that, that side of things. 
they're going to have better composition of, of um, muscling and fat deposition. Uh, they're going to have better usage of forage resources, keeping that room in happy and efficient gain to uh, get those calves off to a good start so that they can prepare for weaning and, and transition appropriately. Uh, so I've kind of talked a little bit about this stuff on the screen here. Um, so what I will do now, if there are any questions, uh, Christy, I will turn it over to you. Maybe. I'm going to... Andy, are there any questions? Did you see them come in or not? I did see some questions come in. Let me go to chat. Can you hear me all right? I can hear you. Mm -hmm. See them come in okay. or not? We do have a couple questions. Uh, can you hear me? Did some questions come in. Let me go to chat. Can you hear me all right? I can hear you. I can okay. see them come in or not? We do have a couple questions. Uh, can you Okay, so I think the first question is Ranch Hand 14 available in bulk. So and I will address that question Chris. as the Purina Cell <laughs> Specialist for Farmers Co-op. And with that being answered is you would want to talk with your local co-op that you, that the local co-op uh, location that you deal with. And that answer is yes, um, we can work with you in regards to that. So thanks for that question. Mm -hmm. and it, it looks so, like and I apologize, I had myself here. truly muted earlier. So had another one that dropped in here is if I use creep feed, will it keep my cows in good body condition? Yep. Uh, that's that's a question that I get quite a bit too. And um, so when we think about how uh, cattle calves specifically will consume feed resources, the first thing that they're always going to go to is mom's milk. Okay. They're always going to go to, to that. Uh, with our Accuration Creep program, um, you know, they're going to use forages next and then, and then the creep feed. So uh, it's not going to take any pressure off of the cow, okay? So you need to be making sure that you are, are feeding your cow appropriately to meet her nutrient requirements. But um, generally speaking, calves are still going to go to mom's milk. Uh, so you need to be taking care of the cow accordingly. Okay, look in here. Okay, so we have um, another looks, one that dropped in. From Roger, and I don't know if you're seeing that, EB, Dr. EB, I apologize. Yep. Should RX3 mm -hmm. be added to the creep, or is mm -hmm. the accuration enough? What about the Avela tubs? So I think maybe about our stress tubs that we recommend as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, I'm going to address the Avela, uh, Avela 4 tubs or the stress tubs. Uh, so uh, Regardless of, um, regardless of the creep feed, you need to be keeping out a good solid mineral program with those cows on a year round basis. So if you are going to be feeding your cows uh, an available for mineral that will be available for the calf obviously to consume as well. But at the time of weaning, you definitely need to be thinking about incorporating a stress tub. So the stress tub will have a, uh, a, you know, the Diamond V XPC yeast to help with rumen function. It will also have the Avela 4 uh, component to it. So definitely at weaning, you need to be putting in the Avela 4 tub. Uh, should, and then as far as the RX3, uh, my go-to answer on this is going to be, uh, let's start with a good, um, a good weaning feed that has RX3 in it at, at time of weaning, whether that be Stress Care 5, Precon, or Accuration Starter. 
So, E.B., I know um, Roger has thrown out RX3, and I know that wasn't part of your presentation. Could you explain a little bit? Because we throw all these acronyms out. I mean, could you explain a little bit about that RX3 technology that he had mentioned there? Absolutely. Yes. So, RX3 um, immune support technology is a additive pack that if you get Stress Care 5, Pre-Con, or Accurash, and Starter Complete today, it will already have RX3 as a component of it. Um, RX3 is um, a prebiotic, probiotic plant extract blend that helps support the calves innate immune system, which, uh, and I could really get into a lot of data and I know that that will be a, another session I think NT has in, in the next couple of weeks, but just to help with the overall, um, weaning period respiratory challenge aspect of, of weaning. Without getting too in-depth uh, on that, Christy, I can sure go into more detail if you want, but. Um, but well, I, and I just kind of think about it as the prebiotic, probiotic with some plant, some, some, some plant extracts, you know, that just kind of help with keeping that gut happy and keeping the immune system going. So um, great mm -hmm. question there, Roger. So I had a few questions that came across on the lovely cell phone. You know how that works. So when customers got the cell specialist phone number, they'll kind of light up that phone line. So one of those, is there an advantage on meat quality, i.e. more or less looking at that marbling with kids that have been crept fed over non-crept fed? Um, so, so the big thing there is the efficient time to develop that that marbling. So when, when calves are born, they're gonna have all the adipose cells that they're ever gonna have, okay? That happens during gestation. But what you wanna be able to do when that calf hits the ground and you know grows and obviously ends up as a as a, a finished steer, it that mar those adipose cells or marbling cells are gonna develop. And so we want to develop those at the most efficient time period. And that, that time period is going to be at that pre-weaning, through weaning, growing phase. And so you are, you are positively impacting that marbling capability by developing those fat cells or adipose cells more efficiently uh, during that time period. So the other one that I had that come across from uh, Greg was if our cows are in good body condition and we have good genetics, is there value in creep feeding? That's one part of the question. And the other one, should not the cows be able to produce enough milk to offset the need of creep feeding? E.B., we're not okay. hearing yeah. you. So I'm going to actually okay, there, now we got you out. question first, okay? And that is, um, should, the cat, should the cows be able to offset that? Um, oh, can you hear me now? Okay. All right. Yes, so I'm going sure to answer the second question first, Chrissy. Um, you know, milk production goes. Somehow you lost me, guys. Can you hear me now? Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, I'm muted. Oh. So we got you okay. back now. All right, you can hear me now. I, I don't know what happened there. I apologize. Um, it just went blank. But um, so your first, your second question, Chrissy, should the cows be able to, you know, catch up? And when we think about that, lactation is going to go down, right, the longer we are in lactation. And so that's really where that that gap is coming from that I showed on those first couple of screens is milk production is going down, calves are getting bigger, requirements going up. Um, and then really capitalizing on those genetics per your first first question, um, you know, I think you'll 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 see an added benefit in terms of wean weights on on that um, 
on that question. Okay. So, and then I had another one. So, <clears throat> pardon me there. If I creep feed my kids, so thinking about going to the cell barn, is mm -hmm. the old thought that maybe my kids might get a little too fleshy. Mm -hmm. So, a couple of things there is if I creep feed my kids, will they get a little too fleshy? And would I potentially deal with any discount when I go to that cell barn? And also, is there some feeding recommendations that you would that you would have? Yep. So we, we get that question a lot. And uh, again, it goes back to that efficient gain and that composition of gain, right? And through that snack eating, utilizing forages, mom's milk, uh, you get that, that efficient gain without those calves getting too fleshy um, because it goes back to that composition of gain, you know, having them look good at time of weaning. So what we would like to do, and um, let me see here, I'm going to try to get our screen share across. So I apologize, folks. So bear with us just a second here is I would, I mean, I want to share across with you is, and I'm having a little bit of difficulty, is if you guys have joined us, we'd like to call for a little bit. If you guys got any questions, because I know we're streaming this across on Facebook, if you guys could drop those questions in. Um, those of you that have joined us with uh, via the Zoom, um, is if you pull out your cell phone and you text Purina to nine five three two three that will get you access to receive a ten dollar off coupon um and there will be we'll need to select a for arkansas and then we'll go in there and select farmers cooperative um checkerboard days so that will get you an email back where you can print off a $10 off coupon and take that into any of the 15 farmers cooperative locations that there is across um, Western Arkansas and then into Eastern Oklahoma. So once again, that would be text Purina to 95323. You'll get a hyperlink back then you will need to enter in an email address and then select a go that will then feed you to Arkansas and then over to our farmers cooperative checkerboard days. What you will get is an email that will give you a hyperlink to be able to print a $10 off coupon to take into your location. So with that, um, there's 15 locations, retail locations throughout uh, Western Arkansas and Eastern Oklahoma. Stop by and any of the staff can visit with you about our opportunities to conduct a feed greatness um, trial. Um, so we've got those for various uh, breeds or species, I apologize. The other thing that I would like to bring up is with COVID restrictions that we've all faced and your health is extremely important to us is that we have set up a virtual online platform. Our cattle series are every other Tuesday on spot at seven o'clock. Our next speaker that will be up is on our cattle series is Dr. Daryl Peel. That will be September the 1st at 7 p.m. And he's going to talk about some cattle market. And then the other following that, we'll have Dr. N.T. Cosby um, on that will talk a little bit more about weaning programs as we're thinking about going into that weaning time, which is kind of follows behind Dr. E.B. Um, E.B., with that, we've got another chat question. I'm going to hush up for just a minute, but we've got another chat question that dropped in. Um, for Miss Kathy here, what is the traditional length of time you should creep feed? Right. Um, so, 
So that um, it kind of goes, you know, what, what you're set up for. Uh, ideally, we want to feed again that range line or that uh, range hand creep feed for about 30 days. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, you could start implementing a creep feed, you know, anywhere around 90 to 120 days old uh, and then feed them all the way through. So, uh, you know, depending on if, if you're fall cabin or spring cabin, you could be feeding anywhere from, you know, four to five months of, of length. So is there kind of, so to kind of back that up, if I think I'm going to be weaning in November, is there kind of a timeline that I want to kind of back that up to? Yeah, so the, the thing is there, just make sure you give yourself enough time to start those calves on a pelleted creep for that 30 days. We don't want to rush that, that time period. Uh, so if we think about November, um, I got to do my, you're asking me to do math in my head, Chrissy. Um, so 30 days, that's going to be October, in my head. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you'll be on feed on Acura Ashen Creep for about 30 days. I think you'll get a nice, a nice return on, on that. But, um, you know, if you're weaning in November, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my phone here. Uh, we could be, you know, June, July timeframe implementing and implementing that Creep feed because the forage quality is going to change. And I do see a, a question here, how important is forage quality going to be um, in, in this? Uh, obviously, forage quality is going to impact it pretty significantly in terms of what's going to be needed for the calf um, to gain, right? So if forage quality is lower, that, that gap is going to be bigger. Um, but what's cool about the Accuration technology is that it allows you to use that forage better. It keeps that rumen happy. They can digest more forages more efficiently. Um, so that that's that's how I would answer that question. So you know, May, June, July, and we and onward. We had another one that was dropped in. Is what is a good age to start weaning our calf crop? Is it more based upon age, or is it based upon that body weight to our cow? Um. So technically, you know, around 205 days is, is you know, the, the average weaning period. Uh, but you bring up a very good point is, is, is cow condition, okay? Especially first calf heifers, right? We know that they have a lot going on. They're lactating, they're losing teeth, they're growing, um, all of those things. So I would, I would pay particular attention to the cow body condition score on those he um, body condition score on those heifers, if they're starting to get below that five and a half, five body condition score, you need to be thinking about early weaning those calves so that you have enough time to put weight back on those, those first calf heifers so they can calve appropriately at a body condition score six. Uh, again, on the cows, you want to watch body condition score two. We don't want to wean. Um, at time of weaning, we don't want cows conditioned to be low a body condition score five. So two to three ribs showing, um, you know, you can see the backbone a little bit, no tail head fat. Um, so be watching body condition score, but then, you know, if, if cows are staying in good condition and um, they're doing good, then, you know, wean two and five days on average on those calves. That's so, and I know that you threw a little bit out, out. Yeah, and I apologize there, Dr. E.B., is I know you threw a little bit out about body condition score and, um, you know, some of us that might be new to getting into the cow-calf operation, could you hit just a little bit when we say a two and a six, kind of what are we looking at there? Yeah, so I like to stay in the range of five to six <laughs> um, as in terms of body condition score on a year round basis. So uh, cattle body condition score, beef cattle body condition score particularly is a one to nine score. So a one is a very thin cow, a nine is a very obese cow. Uh, so ideally we wanna stay again in that five to six range. A five range, uh, like I said, two to three ribs showing, no tail head fat, no brisket fat. Um, and that's really no less than no less than a body condition score five at weaning. If you're at that point, you need to be thinking about weaning calves. A body condition score six, she's gonna have no ribs showing. She can have some tail head fat. She's gonna be round across her top uh, and, and just look really good. 
it's really important to monitor body condition score because you want to make sure you have enough time to keep those or enough time to get those cows in a body condition score six to cabin um because there's a whole long list of things that are impacted by cow body condition score so i try to stay in that five to six range perfect well and um that's all that i'm seeing at this time um dr eb so um so what I would like to do, I'm just going to add on with kind of where I left off about our upcoming virtual events that we've got is Dr. N.T. Cosby will be joining us on September the 29th at 7 p.m. And he'll be talking about that uh, total brood cow nutrition and probably will go in a little bit more in depth with at what point do and kind of looking at that body condition score so we can throw up uh, some pictures to explain that a little bit more for you. So once, and then what we've got coming around uh, around the corner is gonna be next Thursday, is we're gonna have uh, Dr. Mike Schlegel on, and he's gonna talk about how do we, for, uh, feeding strategies for our aquaculture. So how do we feed those fish that's out there in our ponds? Um, that's gonna be at seven o'clock next Thursday. So I know this seems like a lot, folks, um, that we've got going on. And what we're trying to do is just kind of keep it to 20, 30-minute chat. Um, chat times is what I like to call it. You got some needs from an aquaculture or wildlife or equine. Um, please feel free to jump on to the Farmers Co-op website. And that will list out everything that sets there. And even on the Farmers Co-op uh, Facebook page, it also sets there, and it, we've got everything kind of posted out there for you. So um, what I would like to kind of, as we're kind of wrapping this up, want to go back through for you folks, is that if you didn't jot this down, to get that $10 off coupon, pick up that cell phone, text 95323, so that's where you're going to send it to, type in that body, Purina, you'll get a hyperlink back, and then you'll select A because Farmers Cooperative, most of their locations is located in Arkansas. We will select the Farmers Cooperative in Elkins checkerboard dates. And then you will receive an email back that will give you an opportunity to print off the $10 off coupon. And you can take that into any of your Farmers Co-op locations. So with that uh, being said, just kind of want to pop off on our cattle chat time on September the 1st. So in two weeks, we'll have Dr. Daryl Peel joining us talking about the cattle market update. I know some of us are thinking about, do we hold on to these calves? Do we sell them? Do we creep feed them? What a great opportunity to have him joining us and giving us some market conditions. And then we'll have Dr. N.T. Cosby coming on talking about our feeding and then followed up with our brood cow. If you got some equine that sits out there in your, your, your yard that we, or I said, should say yard, but back out there in your pasture, we'll have uh, Ty Cunningham coming on and talking about evaluating our feed costs. And then next Thursday, we'll have Dr. Mike Schlegel coming on talking about aquaculture. So with that being said, we are going to hang out just for a few in case if we've got any final wrap up. Um, questions that you guys would like to drop into your ch uh, into the chat box. Um, so we thank you guys for joining us. Um, Andy, do you have any final questions or comments that you would like to make on the behalf of Farmers Co-op? And I think she has left out on us, Ed. So apologize there. So. Yeah, so Evie, we appreciate you taking the time to join us tonight. We I know that you're, you know, it's kind of a different experience doing this virtual, but I think we're getting adjusted even through a little bit of mishaps that we face with uh, doing this technology platform. So Evie, I'm not seeing anything coming through. So with that, we appreciate you so much, appreciate your support. Um, we know how to get a hold of you if you got any questions <laughs> that we might think about as we're driving down the road or later tonight. Um, we'll sure reach back out to you. So Absolutely. we will see you soon. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you. Right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Bye. You too. Bye-bye.